Hi, thank you for inviting me to the sixth international conference on Studio Genesis, talking about how to move towards thriving societies. I'm Craig Becker from East Carolina University in the U.S. And one of the topics you talked about or wanted to discuss is how to advance the concept of sense of coherence beyond the individual. So I'm looking at how we can measure sense of coherence model using the salutogenic wellness promotion scale. Now Antonovsky, of course, had the question, what explains movement towards health and the healthy health ease disease continuum? Now, this wasn't just getting rid of problems to me. This was really about how we're going to create great health, not just not sick, but functioning better than we would otherwise without necessarily not just back to where we were, but better. Now, of course, Antonovsky's suggestion was to increase sense of coherence. He said there were three dependent variables, now, which was meaningfulness, manageability, and comprehensibility. Now, using those as dependent variables means that we would have an intervention designed to make life more meaningful, life more manageable, and life more comprehensible, which suggests that sense of coherence is, can be altered, it can be improved, it can be changed based on that, or it could get worse depending on your life experiences. So this for him was what answered the salutogenic question was that idea of sense coherence and much of what he did and did great work with it. Now, his answer, meaningfulness, manageability, and comprehensibility was proven in time. It showed in these studies that as you have a higher sense of coherence, you have better health. However, the issue with this was it was a one-factor solution. It had three content areas, but it means that they were somewhat redundant or they weren't adding specifically to it or how we could make meaningless manageability and comprehensibility uh, manipulate it more. Now in the article that was recently published in 2019, Future Directions for the Concept of Salutogenesis, it suggested, it said, it's life experiences that shape sense of coherence. We should measure those life experiences and specifically do some unique sense of coherence research. And that's a lot of what this, this presentation is about. <clears throat> what I'd like to suggest is the Salutogenic Wellness Promotion Scale, which has been validated, measures engagement in healthy life. And it was designed specifically for salutogenic lifestyles. It, it, however, has seven unique dimensions. Now, this is statistical analysis that shows their unique dimensions and they separately contribute or have separate factors that make a difference. Now, statistical analysis, uh, so far as I know, has not shown that to be true for meaningfulness, manageability, and comprehensibility in sense of coherence, which doesn't take away from it. It's just a different model. So with this SWPS, what it shows is that there are social dimensions, social factors we can do to increase um, outcomes, emotional actions to take, vocational what relates to our either daily life or work life, spiritual life, understanding our connection to everybody, intellectual, increasing our intellectual capacity, environmental actions, and physical actions we can do, do to make a difference in health. And all the studies that I've done so far have shown that as we increase the salutogenic wellness promotion scale scoring, or the more we engage in lifestyle behaviors the, that's measured by the SOPS, the better our health. Now, the unique dimensions. For instance, some of these studies have shown that if we can focus on emotional, physical, and social engagement, those things will predict increased health status, which makes sense when the World Health Organization's definition of health is physical, mental, and social well-being, the presence of those factors, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So if we can design interventions to improve emotional, physical, and social engagement, we get better health status. Other studies have also shown that vocational engagement or things that lead to things at work or in life that are inspired and desirable and things you want to do in life that, that what that tells us is we get better performance. Right? The studies have shown in the research that students that do this have better GPAs or grade point averages, and those at work that engage in those activities perform better at work, whatever their, the right way they can perform that is done. So how can this help? What are we going to do? Well, I'm proposing that the slew of portion scales can help us increase the sense of coherence by knowing which factors to focus on or intervene on if meaningfulness, manageability, and comprehensibility are dependent variables, SWPS dimensions can tell us how to intervene to increase those dependent variables. Because we know that as you increase 
those dimensions, we increase health. So how might we do this? Well, we can, how can we increase sense coherence is maybe use both the Lujan gross promotion scale and the sense coherence to study health. Then we think about what's the relationship between this SWPS and the sense coherence? Which factors are related? Specifically what I'm talking about, now the seven dimensions of the SOPS are on the left, and then the SOC dimensions are here on the right. So which of these dimensions are most influential on each of those dimensions? How does that work? Which, which factors or which motions or action, life experiences would we be most engaged with if we want to change and improve meaningfulness, manageability, and comprehensibility? Of course, I don't know right now. I'm not sure. So we'd have to do some research. Research from this would help us guide improvement. We'd understand which life experiences are fruitful and beneficial towards improving those dimensions, which we know is beneficial for improving health and well-being. And we could use that data to create an environment, an environment that makes those behaviors the default, generate life experiences. Somewhat like Steve Jobs has designed Apple, the late Steve Jobs designed Apple, so they would have serendipitous interactions between people that could generate creative outcomes. And it's shown that it's been really beneficial to promote those beneficial life experiences. So that's how we move beyond the individual. We create an environment. We design the environment such that there's going to be default interactions between people uh, and experiences, life experiences that are more likely to happen than they wouldn't would happen otherwise. How do we create a, an environment that's going to give them those choices? That's going to give them that option to be the most likely option to happen. It's going on right now in the United States, but it's been inspired by Hank Ovik from the Netherlands, who redesigned the Netherlands such that they could live with being under sea level, but still have an even better quality of life there in the United States. So the focus for this approach for redesign, redesign, re rebuild by design, is that we think about the outcomes. How do we design an environment such that those behaviors that we want them most likely to engage in are more likely? which would be chronic wellness. Now, chronic wellness is the persistent positive conditions that are enabled through health-causing actions. But those health-causing actions need to be somewhat nudged or more likely to engage in. And if we design the environment so it's easier for them to engage in those behaviors that can increase meaningfulness, manageability, and comprehensibility, then the likely result would be that, which is, I believe, the research. How do we design an environment so that's going to happen? Now, of course, time changes. Things change. People change. Situations change. I mean, think of COVID. All this stuff happens on a regular basis. So we need to keep up and we need to continually adjust and adapt to the changing times and the changing situations to understand what is needed to make the best behaviors more likely. Now, the behaviors really don't change so much, but how we make it likely for them to engage in those behaviors has to happen. So as that happens, what I'm suggesting is that there's a short version of the SWPS, which is just a seven-item scale, that can tell us if something's going on. Are we, are we, how do we keep that engaging in those life experiences that can increase sense of coherence? How is it we re, so we're going to keep rebuilding the environment so that it makes it more likely for them to engage in those chronic wellness activities that would increase meaningfulness, manageability, and comprehensibility that should result in a better outcomes. Now I need some help. Um, let's work together and do some of these studies with the environment and we can determine if this makes sense and if this is possible. That's my proposal. Thank you for listening. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.